The F-100 is one of the best-known planes of the Vietnam War, having flown the most missions during the conflict. The swept back wing fighter plane also earned a special place in history after giving the U.S. its first supersonic aircraft. Its design was quite different from other Cold War-era aircraft. Its thin, long wing, a low-set horizontal tail, and signature long snoot were a result of years of aerodynamic research. The creators of the Super Sabre believed it would be a classic air-to-air -air fighter for the modern era. It would be an American design that could compete with the Soviet Union's latest technology. And even though the U.S. Air Force's first supersonic jet did not succeed as a fighter and had a higher than average accident rate, it was still a pioneer in modern technologies and tactics and was a guinea pig for many risky Vietnam War close support operations. The Dancer After its success in the Korean War, the North American Aviation Company wanted to refine and improve the F-86 Sabre. This aircraft was famous for being the U.S.'s first swept wing fighter capable of confronting Soviet MiGs in some of the earliest jet-to-jet -jet air battles in history. Although capable of Mach 1 flight and tests, the plane was technically rated as subsonic. In a bold move in 1951, North American Aviation approached the U.S. Air Force with a proposal for a new day fighter jet that was rated for supersonic speed. The project was nicknamed Sabre 45 because the aircraft's wings would have a 45-degree sweep. The first mock-up was inspected on July 7, 1951, but had to endure over a hundred modifications before the new aircraft was accepted and renamed the F-100 in November 1951. The U.S. Air Force ordered two prototypes in January 1952 and requested 250 airframes after development was completed. The first prototype, named YF-100A, flew on May 25, 1953, and reached a speed of Mach 1.05 with its Pratt & Whitney XJ57 P7 engine. Later versions of the F-100 were powered by a J57P21A engine, both capable of generating over 10,000 pounds of thrust. The Air Force operational evaluation from 1953 to 55 found the new fighter jet to be of decent quality. Still, it was declared not ready for wide-scale deployment due to several critical deficiencies in the design. The first defect was its poor directional stability, which led to a sudden and unmanageable yaw and roll movement. This led to the loss of North American Aviation's chief test pilot, George Welsh, in 1954. The culprit would ultimately be determined to be the aircraft's undersized tail. Another problem was nicknamed the Sabre Dance by company employees. It emerged because the aircraft's swept wings tended to lose their lift, which resulted in a violent and hard-to-manage pitch-up. North American quickly tried to fix the aircraft's problems. In addition to making the tail larger, thinner, and higher, other F-100 design changes included the addition of new features to answer the tricky issues that arose from supersonic flight. Titanium was placed thoroughly in the plane for heat resistance. A low-drag and streamlined fuselage and canopy with a small air intake duct also contributed as innovations. In addition, the wings were lengthened 26 inches. The standard jet had a service ceiling above 50,000 feet and a range of more than 1,000 statute miles. The rear fuselage and canopy lines matched in shape, making the Super Sabre appear to be arched. The F-100 also had automatic leading-edge slats and a low-positioned horizontal stabilizer. The Super Sabre could be adapted to fire rockets and missiles and carry a Mark VII nuclear armament and four 20mm cannons. The F-100C could even be specially fitted with three external fuel tanks and a Mark VII in case it ever needed to be scrambled on a long-distance, one-way mission. The Super Sabre's definitive model, the F-100D, was approved by North American Aviation and the Air Force in 1958. A jet with fighter capacity that had improved avionics, ability to utilize most USAF non-nuclear weapons, and an autopilot. Ready or not. Despite obvious, dangerous problems in the F-100's development, delays in the Republic F-84F Thunderstreak program pushed the Tactical Air Command to order the F-100 into service. The Super Sabre debuted with the 479th Fighter Wing at the George Air Force Base in 1954. By November of the same year, six F-100s had already suffered significant accidents due to the design's flight instability and structural and hydraulic system failures. The Air Force decided to ground the entire fleet for three months. When finally cleared to fly again, most of the Super Sabre's roles during its 15-year operational history were peaceful and included many deep penetration reconnaissance missions. The Hun, nicknamed by North American employees as an acronym for 100, did however play a much more active role in the Vietnam War. The F-100 was the first U.S. military jet deployed to Southeast Asia after being transferred to Thailand in April 1961 to provide air defense. Most F-100s were painted in a distinctive green-brown camouflage. The Hun ended up serving in Southeast Asia longer than any other American jet. The aircraft served an escort role until 1964, when they were dispatched to strike bases in North Vietnam. 
In March of 1965, they accompanied F-105 fighter bombers as part of the Rolling Thunder bombing campaign. Despite its sidekick status, the Super Sabre took part in the first jet-on-jet engagement of the Vietnam War in April 1965. The F-100 of Captain Donald Kilgus covered a raid targeting the Tan Ho Bridge, and his formation was attacked by four North Vietnamese MiG-17s. And although these enemy aircraft were significantly slower than the American supersonic jets, the MiG's powerful triple cannons managed to knock one Super Sabre out of the sky and severely damaged another. Captain Kilgus was able to release his jet's drop tanks and turned in a way where he managed to lock onto the tail of one of the MiGs. The enemy fighter dove towards the ground, trying to get the American jet to follow him, believing the Hun wouldn't be able to straighten out in time. At only 7,000 feet from the surface, the Super Sabre discharged its four cannons. According to Kilgus, quote, I saw puffs and sparks on the vertical tail of the MiG, and very shortly thereafter I didn't see anything. I could have been at 580 knots. I pulled out at the last minute. Three MiGs were lost during the battle, two of them shot down by their own Vietnamese flak. The unknown fate of the third one supports Kilgus' theory that they scored the first MiG kill of the war, even though the Air Force only listed it as a probable kill. The Hun was also the first of the codenamed Wild Weasel aircraft. In the program, the Air Force modified seven F-100s to suppress enemy air defenses. This variant became the EF-100F model, which had two radars and rocket pods. These instruments tracked and marked the enemy's position for the F-105 model to destroy later on. Later, the Weasels carried AGM-45 Shrike radar homing missiles to take out the radars themselves. The Air Force saw the satisfying results and replaced the Huns with more modern F-4 and F-105s to perform the Wild Weasel missions after July 1966. The last Super Sabre left Vietnam in July 1971, having logged 360,283 combat sorties. Throughout the conflict, 242 F-100s were lost, with 186 falling to North Vietnamese anti-aircraft defenses. No F-100 were lost to enemy aircraft. They were replaced by the F-4 Phantom II and the F-105 Thunder Chief. And despite the April 1965 jet-to-jet combat, where the Air Force wrote the incident as a probable kill, no F-100 was ever credited with an official aerial victory. Variants. Some F-100 were equipped with a low-electronic altitude bombing system, LABS, which could work with autopilot, so that a Mark 7, Mark 38, or Mark 43 nuclear bomb could be delivered. Conventional bomb loads, including six 750-pound or 4,000-pound bombs, were the usual configuration. The F-100 Zell was another project where the Air Force tested a zero-length launch. They used a huge rocket booster under the jet's rear fuselage to take off on a flat surface, such as the back of a truck. This alternative takeoff method was adopted due to fears that NATO air bases could be wiped out by powerful Soviet nuclear weapons. It never ended up being deployed operationally. A popular variant of the Super Sabre was the RF-100 Slick Chick program. The jets were modified to fit cameras instead of armament. The engineers added extra space to the edge of the wing of this model since the photographic equipment would not all fit within the available small space. RF-100As flew over the Soviet-occupied territory in highly secretive missions in Europe when the Cold War seemed to be getting hot. Many of the missions are still classified today. In a show of ability and craft, the Air Force arranged demonstrations of flights, where F-100s would perform an aerial precision in demonstration flights throughout the world. The Thunderbirds, as they were called, were a four-man team that was viewed by millions of people, performing incredible precision maneuvers at low altitudes. The Super Sabre offered the squadron the chance to create sonic booms for the first time, although this practice was discontinued after the FAA banned most supersonic flight over the continental U.S. Cancellation By 1972, the Super Sabre was replaced in the Air Force by newer and more specialized and lighter close support and attack models. Air National Guard units kept flying them for years afterward, sometimes using them as simulators and training partners for air combat training. The institution retired the last F-100s from official operational use in 1979. Most of the remaining Super Sabres were converted into QF-100 drones and expanded as targets during the development of weapon systems. The F-100 was the first of the U.S. fighter jet Century series, a generation of planes that included the F-101 Voodoo, F-102 Delta Dagger, F-104 Starfighter, F-105 Thunder Chief, and F-106 Delta Dart. In total, North American Aviation built 2,294 Super Sabres. In 1953, the Pentagon paid $697,029 for each aircraft. In addition to the U.S. Air Force, the F-100 Super Sabre was also deployed by Taiwan, Denmark, France, and Turkey. The French Armée de l'Air bought 100 aircraft in 1958 and used them for combat missions in Algeria. Turkish F-100s, received from America and Denmark, 
flew sorties in support of the 1974 invasion of Cyprus and were the last F-100 operators, retiring their jets in the early 80s. A few operational F-100 are still in existence today and belong to private owners. 